I'm Shelly Turner with the Builderall team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with fonts inside of your Cheetah Editor. So as you can see, I'm inside my Cheetah Editor, and we're going to work with setting up these standard fonts for your website first. So these are the fonts that you're going to preset, pre-configure, and that way every time you grab them and use them anywhere in your site, they're going to be a specific size, a specific color, and you'll already have configured them the way you want them. So to do that, you're going to go to Add, and then you're going to go to Font. And inside of Font, there's several different sizes. There's H1 all the way to H6. So if we scroll down, there's H6 right there. And then the last one is the paragraph size. So each of these are in this area pre-configured. So if you want to pre-configure them differently, you can do this. And what this is doing is setting up your font so that every time you pull an H1, you're going to get the exact same style throughout the entire website. So let's take a look at H1 really quickly. And if you'll notice, this item right here is an H1. So let's change that and see if we can see how it will change the website. So first of all, I can change the font family. So right now it's default at Muley Black. If I click the down arrow, I can choose any other style. So let's go to uh, Arial Black. And if I click that, you see that it dynamically changed. Everything in your website that is set up as an H1, if you change it here in the font area, it will change. Also, you can change the font size. So I can make this slide to make it smaller or slide to make it bigger. And you see that it's dynamically changing as I'm looking at it on my website. I can also change the font size in the mobile. So if I click the mobile view, there's my font right there. If I don't like the size, here's the font size mobile. I can make it smaller or I can make it larger. We'll go ahead and make it smaller like this. Perfect. And then I can change the line height. So I'll go back to desktop. And on the line height, this is what's the dis distance if there's more than one line. And right now it's set to 1.1. I can increase that to create more space. Or I can decrease that to create less space between the lines. Usually on line height, a one is good unless you're trying to create additional space in between the lines because of spacing issues. The next one is color. So right now this is set to black. If I click the color bar, it will open a color picker, a color panel, and I can choose any color I want to. So I can go in here and change the color, and let's scoot it down to maybe like an orange color and then change it. And as you can see, it's dynamically changing it right on the page here. So I can see what's happening to my font as I'm changing it. But I do have to remember that every single H1 on this page is going to change if I change it here. Okay. So now I've changed it in the font area. Now what happens if I want just this element changed and I don't want to change everything that's identified as H1. To change just this element, I can actually double click inside of the font area. And when I do that, I actually get a dynamic toolbar that I can use to change the font in only this area. So I can change it, the style from uh, heading to one of the other styles, or I can actually change the size. So I can change the size to, uh, let's see, 39. So that kind of changes that size right there. I can add shadow. So I can add a dark shadow or a light shadow. I can um, remove all formatting if I want to. And then I can change the color. So right here's the color. If I click the down arrow, I've got some standard colors, or I can do the color picker. Um, let's go ahead and change it to green. Oh, I've got to highlight it first. So let's highlight it and we'll change the color to green. So now everything is showing up as green. If I highlight it again, I can go to text shadow and choose dark shadow. And you can see if I click outside of that, that I've got kind of a shadow going on. If I highlight it again, I can do a light shadow. So I'll click light shadow. And then take a look again, and you see how it kind of pops out inside of my text. Um, then I've got some other things, including uh, right justify, left, left justify, and center. I can do bullets and numbers. I can even do some indentions. And then I can also highlight text and add a link to it. So lots of things that I can do in this dynamic toolbar. 
The most important thing to remember is when you're working with a text element and you're working in the dynamic text toolbar, the last thing you need to do once you get the text the way you want it is to click save. And that will allow you to exit that element. And the only thing you've changed as far as font is the font on that element. But if you notice, the standard font stays the same. So that's how you can edit font inside of your editor two different ways. You can edit the font by going to the add font area and changing all of the font for those styles. Or you can change one individual element by double clicking and getting the dynamic toolbar, setting it up the way you want it, and then clicking save, and that will change only that font element area. So let's talk about what else you can do with fonts. First, I want you to notice if I click on the font element, I've got a mini toolbar. This allows me to center this item, hide this item, so I can click hide, and it goes into the show hidden elements. Then I can hover over that element it shows me what it'll look like if we put it back, and then I can click the eyeball to actually put it back. And then once you're done with the hidden elements, you just click that button again. It puts that side panel away. If I click on the text element again, I have the ability to duplicate, so I can duplicate this text element. And then if I click on it again, I can get the trash can. If I click that, it allows me to delete it. And to confirm, I just click that's fine and now I have the original one that I had set up. So that's the mini toolbar right there. If I right click this element, it opens up the settings area. But remember, we don't have style available because style is only available in the font area. And then if you double click the font to edit only this element. So the style area is not here on the, the sidebar. But if you click animation, you have the ability to animate a text element. And with animation, you have the ability to animate based on time, based on when it becomes visible on the page, based on whether a user clicks on it or hovers on it. And on the time animation, you can choose wh what time you want the animation to start. So in five seconds, you can start the animation. And then once you choose the time and time to start, then you can choose the effect. And there's many different effects that you can choose in shooting including bouncing, flash, pulse, rubber band, shake, head shake, swing, and many, many more. So check out those effects. There's a lot of them. And then after effect, you choose the speed. Do you want it to go slow, slower, fast, or faster? And then you have the option to set the animation to infinite so that the animation keeps going. After animation, the settings you have is advanced. And under advanced, you can work with layering on your page. And then also you can save your element. So if you get a text element that you really like and you want to use again, all you have to do is name it and then click save. And it will save into your personal area where you can use it again on any page as well as any website in that account. Now let's take a look at the mobile version to see what's happened with our font. So I'm going to click the mobile version, and there's our font right there. Now if I click on it, you can see that I've got another mini toolbar, and I've got the hide element, and then I've also got an up arrow and a down arrow. And that allows me to move this text up in the mobile view or down in the mobile view. If I right-click this item, then again, I don't have a style area, but I do have the animation area, and I do have the advanced area with something new, and that is padding. So if I want to change the spacing that's happening above, below, and to the side of this item, I can change the padding, and this only affects the mobile. So up the top, I see there's a lot of room there. So I could delete some of that spacing, and it moves it up. And then the bottom, I can delete some of that spacing, and it moves it closer down. So you have the ability to affect spacing in the advanced area without affecting your desktop version. In the mobile version, you do not have the ability to double click in the text and change it. And that's because if you change it, the desktop version will be changed as well. Now remember this was an H1 font. So if I go to add and then font, 
and I go to change the font size. So I'm going to change it to a smaller size on mobile. So instead of 36, I'll go down. So I can change the size by going to this font area and changing the size for mobile to make it smaller or bigger. But that's the only area that I'm going to be able to access that size for font to be able to change it without affecting the desktop size. So now we're going to go back to the desktop area. And as you can see, we've changed our text element. We've learned that there's two places to change it, and that is either in the font area or double clicking the text element and changing only that text element. So that's how we work with font and text inside of our editor. Have fun building something amazing with Cheetah.